Hey, Cameron McKenzie here. I want to show you how to append a range of values to an Excel doc. And in this little tutorial here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take three PDF files. You can get them on my GitHub account if you want to do this example on your own. But I'm just going to scrape some data off them. And then the data that I get from each of those different files, I'm going to append it onto an Excel file. So there's going to be three different PDF files. But when I'm done, the line items for each of those three different files are all going to have been added to the same Excel spreadsheet. So I'll kick this off by creating a new process project called Scrape into Excel. And as I create that, I just want to show you the three files I've got. I've got a folder here named orders off the C drive, and I've got this invoice here, and it's got these two lines here, and then I've got another one that's got these three lines here, and then I've got another one that's got three lines here. And what I want to do is I want to scrape these lines, so get these line items for each of these three different files, and then write them into Excel. And so that's where I'm going in this particular tutorial. So in order to start that off, I need to open the main window and loop through all the files in that folder. In order to do that, I need a for each loop, drag that on here, and for each file in directory.getFiles, and then the name of the directory, which is orders. Now it's actually invoices in there, but I called it orders. And so let's go through each of the files in that orders folder. And one at the time, what we'll do is attach them to a process. So you then look for the process action over here, start process. And the process is going to be this file. I like naming it file, not process, because that's what we're going through each of these files. And I have to say to string there just to make sure that it's the string representation that we're going to start. And then as we start this process, we want to work through it in Adobe Acrobat Reader. And that means attaching that Adobe Acrobat Reader to this process. And so I look for the attach window. I drag it on here. And now I actually got to do a, a visual sort of click and touch. So I click indicate window on screen that I want to attach to this process. And then I just click the Adobe PDF viewer. And it knows that it's going to be using Adobe PDF Viewer in order to work through all of these files. Now, one thing you do have to set is the selector here. When you click on Adobe like that, notice it sets the name of the individual file there. B2B002 is what was open. I need to deselect that and then validate again. The reason for that is I want to loop through multiple files. If I've got a specific file identified here, my screen scraping and my looping isn't going to work. So make sure you've deselected that. Again, that was from the selector, edit selector, and then make sure that the title's deselected and then validate again. Okay, so what do we do there? What do we do next? Well, I guess the next thing is actually just to scrape that screen. So this is where we go into the data scraping process. I click data scraping here. It says, what do you want to data scrape? I make sure that I've got my PDF on the screen. I'm going to deselect anything that's on there right now. Click next. And then I can just click on any column in this row here. So I just click on that. And you notice that it pulls out all of the different rows. It knows exactly what I want to pull in here. So that looks fantastic. I'm real happy with that. Now, when I go back into UiPath, notice that this data scraping is outside of the attach window activity. That's not good for me, so I'm just going to take the data scraping and drop it right into the do there. That's what I need. And also, I have a feeling if I edit the selector on the data scraping, notice it's once again identified that individual file. I want to deselect that. That's no good for me. And I don't need that now because I'm already in this attach window process over here. One problem I do run into is the fact that the data scraping is going to pull in all of these empty rows here, and I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So one step that you'll want to do is just add a data table filter. And so I'll add this data table filter here, go into the filter wizard, and I'm going to say any column, any, any row where the first column is empty, just remove it. So uh, filter rows, look at column zero. If it's empty, remove it. So that's going to get rid of any blank rows here. And when I've got rid of all of my blank rows, I can start putting things into Excel. And so in order to work with Excel, you need to have the Excel application scope. So I'll see if I can find that. I'll drag that over right after the filter. 
And when you work with the Excel application scope, you actually need uh, an Excel file to work with. Now this project is called Scrape into Excel. So I'm gonna go into all of my projects here, find Scrape into Excel right there. And I'm just gonna create a brand new Excel file called Scrape into Excel.xlsx. That's right in the root of the project. And so here when it asks for the for the Excel spreadsheet, I can just type in the name. I don't have to do a relative path. This is also nice because as soon as I, you know, upload this to GitHub, all of those files will be in there. And in fact, I'm actually just going to throw those three orders in there as well, just so if anybody actually wants to download download this example over on GitHub, they can. So let me take those orders, take those three, copy them. And now they're all pasted in there. So they're all together. Although I'm pulling it from the C drive, not from here. Okay, so we've now got the Excel application scope in there. What do I wanna do? Well, I guess the next thing I wanna do is just append all of that data that I've got out of those structured files into the Excel spreadsheet. And that's simply a matter of using the append range facility. So I'll drag the append range facility into my Excel application. It'll go into sheet number one, and now it's asking me what data table worth of data do I wanna throw in there? Now, when you do an extract duct structured data table data scraping, you notice that it creates a data table for you. It takes all of the data in that extracted data table and stores it in this variable named extract data table. So you find that by clicking on the, on the activity for the data scraping, I now highlight that name, and I'm gonna paste it down in here under append range. And so this is gonna have Excel take all of the rows that were extracted from the data extraction from the PDF and append them to sheet one of the PDF of the Excel file. Okay, and I believe that's it. I'm gonna just take a look. Oh, look, I've got a little error there. So it's saying, what data table do I wanna filter? And yeah, that was silly of me. I got ahead of myself. Don't get, ahead, don't get out over your skis. For this filter data table wizard, you wanna make sure that the input table is the extract data table and also the output table. So you wanna take in this data table that's got a bunch of empty rows in it, take the rows out and then update that table with no rows in it. So the extract data table is there, there and there. So if you take a look, the data scraping creates the extract data table. The filter data table takes that as the input it also sets it as the output. And then finally, right here in the append range, we use that extract data table as well. Okay, now let me just make sure that everything is working properly here and I don't have any errors. Everything's two string and in quotes. That all looks good. I'm now gonna run this file. Notice it now goes through each of these individual files. It looks good. And if I take a look at this scrape into Excel file, Notice that it's now put all of the data and the details into these files. And this matches exactly what was in all of those individual files. So 246241, I can go into the PDF and you can see 451, 624, 2 and 4, all mapping to the data that's in this file. And there you go. That's how you can scrape a PDF file and then bring all of that scraped data into Excel. And there you go. That's how easy it is to append a range of values to an Excel doc. If you enjoyed this tutorial, why don't you head over to theserverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. You can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.